our three employees all quit. And they opened up a shop about a mile away from our shop. And would you know, a bunch of our customers went with them. Some of our employees went with them. And we don't even know if we can keep the doors open. Hello, this is Elizabeth Mower, president of BEI. And I'm John Brown, the founder of BEI. Each episode, we take you into the world of exit planning, sharing the stories, struggles, and opportunities of business owners and their advisors. We'll get into this episode's conversation right after this. Gain the insight and knowledge that thousands of business owners and their advisors have used to plan for the future. The BEI membership equips you with the proven process that enables owners to exit their business on their terms. Receive access to case studies, podcasts like the one you're listening to now, a resource toolkit, and so much more. Cement your position as the trusted advisor to your most successful clients. Get started today by visiting exitplanning.com forward slash membership. That's exitplanning.com forward slash membership. We're here today to talk about some of the issues that are common to working with business owners. If you are a business owner, you'll probably recognize yourself in some of the stories that we tell, and they all have kind of a common theme. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I was on, John, you were out of town, but I was on a video call with a group of professional advisors from the BEI advisor community uh, yesterday. And in that call, one of the advisors was talking about a business client who they've done a little bit of work for over the years, have known for a very long time. Uh, uh, he called it, I get along well with them. This sort of, you know, I'm friendly. I maybe see them around town yeah. at, at other events and I know them and we, and we get along very well. It's kind of the way this advisor described it. And he said, There's, I've got a concern. He was asking for advice from the other people on the call. And he said, here's my concern. Uh, there's a, there's a, it's actually a family business. The father's working in the company. There are two different business active children. So two kids working in the company who are adults. Uh, the company does very well. It's pretty successful, but it's kind of a mess on the inside. Nobody knows who's doing what. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And there are other children who don't work in the business. And this advisor's big concern, he's really kind of nervous and anxious about this client's situation because if something happens to the father, this advisor has determined by working with the family and looking at their documents that they have in place that things are going to go very, very badly if something mm. happens to the father. And... Uh, and he's really nervous about it for them. He's sort of projecting his anxiety onto them and saying, listen, you know, if something happens to you, dad, there are a lot of issues that are currently unresolved, many things that have never even been discussed. And what he's getting back from the father and from one of the uh, business active children that, that he talks with is, yeah, we do need to do something about that and yet nothing ever happens. Well, should we schedule a meeting? Well, you know, we're pretty busy right now, maybe next month, maybe next quarter. Uh, probably next year we'll be able to do something about that. And this has been going on for a while. So this advisor, because he's got this expertise, he knows that if they don't plan for the future of this business, things are gonna be very ugly and very messy. And yet and yet, when he, when he approaches them, uh, he, he feels like maybe he's not doing it right. He doesn't know. He doesn't know how to. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know how to get them to take the first step, and he's concerned. He can see things down the road. So uh, he was asking for advice, and he got a bunch of advice, which we don't have time for me to share, from other advisors about approaches he could take, tax he can sort of go on, mm -hmm. uh, questions that he could ask that might sort of. Um, jar some movement one way or the other. Ultimately, you know, it's really no problem for him if this business falls apart. It's not, it's not, it's not his business. But, but he feels sort of an obligation, and I th and I mm -hmm. and I respect that. Uh, and and 
I, and I think it's a common it's a common problem that we see. If you're a business owner listening, you know that you've put things off that you shouldn't have. If you're an advisor and you're listening, you know that you have clients who just mm-hmm. don't get to yeah. something. So I was reminded of that when I came in to see what story you were going to tell today, because I think it I think your story is sort of picks up where that one leaves off and then goes on a little bit into the future and we know what can happen. So why don't you tell the story yeah. about about the owners that you were working yeah, with? Yeah, because I my story has a conclusion to it. Mm-hmm. Your story is still a to question be continued. Mark. That's right. To be continued. We'll see what happens. So my story I would call I know I need to plan, but just not now. Right. Which is exactly the same as your scenario. It's I, a theme. I had actually had clients, a husband and wife, they owned a machine shop, a pretty successful machine shop, and they had been doing some estate planning work for them, a little, little bit of business planning. And one time I was talking to them and, and really said, because I was doing estate exit planning at that time as well, I said, have you guys given any thought to, you know, what the future looks like without your business or what we, you'd like to have happen to the business. And they said, yeah, you know, we have been thinking about this. We've got these three key employees that really run this business. Uh, they have expressed an interest in owning the company if we would ever decide to sell it. And so I think that's what we're going to do. I said, okay, well, should we, should we take some actions. Should we sit down and talk about what that means to you, what you need from the business, all the initial questions you're going to ask clients to help establish their goals at the outset of any planning engagement. Sure. And they said, yeah, we're going to do that, but you know, not, not right now. We're not just now. We're going to wait. So nothing happened. I didn't follow up, um, which I probably should have done. I'm not sure it would have made a difference, but I should have done that. Six months late, late, later, maybe a year later, they I see on my appointment calendar that they're coming in to meet with me. I thought, God, they're finally going to do something right. about this. That's great. So they sit down. I said, okay, guys, what are we meeting about? I said, well, our three employees all quit. Uh, they all quit. No. And they opened up a shop about a mile away from our shop. And would you know... A bunch of our customers went with them, some of our employees went with them, and we don't even know if we can keep the doors open. Mm-hmm. And that is just a common theme you and I are going to continue to talk about is the inaction of owners. And so for years, I think, when I, was, when I saw this happening, I, I blamed the owners. Why didn't the owners take action? Why didn't they do something? We've talked to them about this. Why don't they do something about it? Well, they don't know what to do, in part. Uh, They are busy, but they're not too busy to not do some planning. It's really incumbent upon the advisor community, in in my humble opinion, to be more proactive to encourage the owners, to give them examples, to provide them with information on the necessity of taking action. By telling stories like this, hopefully some owners are listening in, they'll say, yeah, you know, we need, do need to do something. And whether you do it now, let's say you want to do something for your key people, it's much more important to start right now than to wait another year or another two right. years. Right. What if you wait it, until they're disgruntled? What if you until wait until they're irritated? Or, or what if you wait until they're gone? Or we could do something now that would help motivate them more. Right. And so we'd start helping the business right now. Right. Rather than putting it off, shoving it off because we think we're too busy. It's really, I think, uh, a desire on the owners perhaps not to make some decisions. Right. And if you know that many business owners don't do anything about planning for the future, and someone brings this issue to your attention, you're a business owner, what you might also be able to tell yourself is, well, if I do something about this, if I start planning, if I put something in place, just anything, is there not a great chance that I'm much further ahead than my competitors? Because my competitors aren't doing it either. Now, if I put planning in place, dealing with my key people, dealing with what's going to happen to the business if something happens to me, just any aspect of planning for the future of the business, then you're just leaps and bounds ahead of your next competitor. Right. You have a stronger business, a healthier business, a more, a more likely to continue on business. 
And that's a competitive advantage. So certainly if there's a business owner who's aware of these kinds of issues, I think those who plan are just going, are going mm -hmm. to end up in a better position than those who don't. And what we know is that lots of business owners don't. I think in our, yeah. in our business owner surveys, it's something like, what is it? It's like 17% of business owners that we survey have done something about planning right. for the future. It's, it's incredibly which, small. Which was a huge number compared to older surveys. So it's sort of, the, when I first saw that, I thought, oh, well, it's, it's growing, it's increasing, this is good. And I thought, wait a minute, I think that means 83% of them aren't doing anything. Yeah. So yeah. a huge number of privately held businesses are just not able to take the first step. But before we go, I think that, I think that what we can talk about is that Sort of the pendulum has swung back and forth a couple of times in my observation in the last 20 years or so. And there was sort of just advisors kind of staying in their lane, doing the thing that they were the best at. That was pretty pretty prevalent when I first started working with business clients. And, and then there was kind of a big push towards what you and I might have called comprehensive planning. You know, if you're going to plan for one thing, you need to do all of it. I was just saying yesterday, it's sort of like me looking at my backyard. When I start thinking I need to do one thing with my backyard, then I think, well, if I want to do one thing there, I'm probably going to have to move the, the sprinkler head. And if I do that, I'm probably going to have to put this other thing in and do this. Next thing I know, it's this giant project. And I'll give you one guess. What do I end up doing? Um Going Nothing. back into your house and reading a book. Exactly. That's actually <laughs> true. So so I do nothing yeah. because it seems too overwhelming. And I think there was a phase in the, in the last 20 years, as you and I have been working with other advisors, where, where there was a big push for comprehensive <clears throat> planning. And, and it may or may not have overwhelmed some clients to where they just go back in the house and read a book, go do something else. So now I see that I see the evolution really shifting again. Mm -hmm. And now what we're seeing is, okay, well, let's start with something. We'll deal with the fact that there's all of these moving parts, that growing business value is important and dealing with your family and your estate plan is important. Dealing with, dealing with the mechanisms that you use to transfer ownership is important and minimizing taxes is important. Great. That's fine. Why don't we pick one? Let's start somewhere. What's the thing that bothers you the most? And then, and then why don't we just try to focus on that and try to make progress and doing something about mm -hmm. that issue and putting it to the side is going to be, is going to be more than what we had yesterday. So let's do that now. Do you see that as you travel around the country and talk to advisors and hear business owner stories that, that we've got a culture now, at least in, at least in advisors who, who tend to be sort of planning oriented in, in doing something is better than nothing. Are you still seeing a lot of kind of insistence on comprehensive planning or advisors staying in their lane? What are you seeing now? Well, I, I can give you the yin and the yang. Okay. So when I first started to do exit planning, uh, for me, an exit plan was a comprehensive plan. Right. I, you know, and if, if I met with a business owner who didn't want to talk about goals and aspirations and resources and how to grow the value and what exit path to take and also involve business continuity, what happens if I die too soon in right. estate planning. I would say, you know what, uh, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Work with one of the other attorneys on my law firm on some other issue, right. but you know, I'm going to wash my hands of you uh -huh. because there were plenty of owners who wanted to do comprehensive planning. Right. Um, that was clearly not an intelligent decision. And, and so I've learned Ex to your point exactly, that's way too much for most owners uh, to even imagine because they don't know what that means. They don't even know what all of this is. But uh, so I'm going to come back to that in a second. Now I'm going to jump forward to last night. Okay. I was giving, talking to a group of advisors out of state, uh, had a presentation to a bunch of them, and their fundamental concern when it when it came to doing exit planning for business owners is how do we get owners to take the first step? How do we get them to So they're back? exactly talking it's, about yeah. the client stories that we just told. Yeah, it's exactly. So they have it, lots of those. They've got, yeah, they don't have any happy stories because they, they never really start engagements. So to your point, what we've learned and I think in BEI is to just do part of the planning and, and, and to, work with some of the tools we've got to help the owner determine 
What is their most pressing concern in their business? Not in their exit. Uh, not what happens if they, uh, well, that could be important. What happens if they die? But that could be the most pressing concern. Like, that's a business concern. But maybe it's how do I keep my key employees? How do I start growing the business? It's been stagnant for the last several years. Uh, whatever that is, we, we identify that and we address that both from a planning perspective and an execution perspective. We implement an action and take an action that improves the business today. Right. That is, I think, a real key to this whole planning process is understand at least some of what the owner wants and some of what the owner has, that first part of the planning process, and then do something that improves the life of the business and the owner. Mm -hmm. Right. I was reading an article this morning that was talking about managing your technology stack, which is a, which is a fairly recent concept, at least it is to me. Maybe yeah, I haven't around. even heard of it okay, before, well, so it could be within uh, the last five years. We're doing it here in the company, oh, and oh, and we have a technology, know. I know, it's good. Yeah, yeah. We have a technology stack, and it's about, uh, I can exp I, people can Google it. And, uh, and uh, I was just thinking as you were talking about how this, the technology stack concept is also very similar to our planning that we're doing now. It's sort of like a planning stack, where, you know, you have different kinds of things that, that work best when they work together, but they have their own purpose and function. Mm -hmm. And so if there are owners out there or advisors who work in this space and, they're, and, they, and they understand the concept of a technology stack, that's really the kind of planning that business owners seem to be gravita gravitating toward, I think, today, which is to have, understand that there are different things that have different functions and they all need to work together to the extent that they, that they can. And it's the role of a good advisor, certainly the ones that, that BEI trains have the breadth of exposure and, and mm -hmm. training. It's the role of a good advisor to understand all those different pieces. And it's the job of the business owner to identify which thing is most urgent for me to work on next and then to get, and then to get the help that they need. So yeah. and I, I, I would just add to that, uh, we have tools to help the owner determine what a what are the most urgent concerns in his right. or her business? Mm -hmm. And because otherwise, I think even that's difficult sometimes for them to identify. They're, they're busy putting fires out and they don't have the time to reflect, but we have assessment tools that can help them understand what needs to be addressed next. And that's then what we can do to help them. Right. The end. That's all I have. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Join us for our next episode. For more content like this, please visit exitplanning.com.